Uh, good evening. It is May 7th, 2024 at 6 o'clock. This is the Selectman's meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and a roll call, please. Teresa Amos, present. Joe Shank, present. Chad Sexton, Iranian, present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. I want to thank those in service, those past and present, and our first responders. Thank you very much for your service. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, 1.4 Chairman's and Deletions. Uh, Teresa, do you have any? Uh, well, it should be covered under the review, but I do have a, a part of the capital plan. I want to review the capital plan uh, funding. Okay, so that can be covered under 4.2, review the special annual warrant articles? Yes, it's already on there. Okay. Uh, Joe, you No, I'm good. Eric? Okay. Uh, 1.5, review and approve meeting minutes. We don't have any. Um, we're going to jump right into a public hearing. Uh, those that are here for the public hearing, we need you to sign in if you mind, don't mind. Um, public hearing is an ordinance with the provisions on Chapter 138, Section 15A of the Massachusetts General Laws. A public hearing will be held on Tuesday, May 7th, 2024 at 6.05 in the Selectman's Chambers, 272 Main Street, Townsend, Mass., the purpose of the hearing is to act on the application by Gourmet House, Inc. for transfer of owner, manager, and uh, entity name associated with all alcoholic beverages, license for premises of 18 Main Street, Townsend, Massachusetts, 01469, doing business as Panda Walk, to hereby be operated by C. Panda Walk, Inc. Alternately, the public may access the meeting, um, and the Zoom link is provided there. And uh, all citizens are encouraged to present written or verbal uh, comments prior to or during the hearing. Uh, this is in regards to the local license authority, uh, chairman, vice chairman, and clerk, and we are all present today. This was published in the Sentinel and Enterprise on April 17th, 2024, and April 24th, 2024. <coughs> um, references for the record, the receipt of written materials submitted for the record. Um, we had, uh, it looks like they, there were a, uh, referrals, mandatory referrals sent out. Yes. Um, yep, yes. One in. yes. How are you? Hi, I'm Jay. This is Chacha. Hi there. Come on in. You're here for, uh, the, the, the all the beverage, yeah. all alcohol beverage, beverage license? Yes. Yep. Okay. You want to come in and have yep, a seat? You can come and have a seat. We'll have you sign in. Sure. You guys can sit up you here. You can sit at the table. It's a little intimidating. <laughs> we don't like, really. <laughs> So we, um, I just opened the public hearing um, and we are looking at now um, anybody that has been sent out for requests and then we'll ask you to speak on behalf of uh, your license change, okay? All right. Um, so I have the transfer application which has been okayed. Um, it's gone through with, everything has been submitted. Um, there is, uh, land use department had no comment. Land use, only one that you can What was that? Okay. 
and they had no comment as well. Um, and I assume police and fire were also notified and they had no, yeah. no comments. Okay. All right, and they have gone through all of the proper, proper listings. Okay. Um, so you basically can address the board on what you'd like, you know, with your, you're putting it for a transfer and do you have anything to add to what you had in your application? Yeah, we, uh, we don't have anything more to add except, um, miss this, I just want to introduce you. This is the manager and the owner of the, uh, the, the restaurant. See, okay. See, the hand out. Okay. And nice to meet you, sir. And uh, he has been the owner in a lot of restaurants, which is I at Ayers, mm -hmm. which has uh, been a 4.3 or 4.5 star <laughs> restaurant. Like uh, the the customer they pay back. That's very good. He's worked there for five years, mm -hmm. and then he he owns another restaurant in Novo, which is also a beverage. Uh, Survey full beverage to service uh, restaurant. Okay. So the restaurant you hire also is a full beverage restaurant. So it's been pretty um, experienced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's possible he will be serving his wife and him be serving as a bachelor certified. Jeff certified. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Teresa, Joe, do you have any questions? I'm sure it's here, but I just couldn't find it. Is there any change in the hours that you'll be serving alcohol, or are they going to remain the same under the, the same. current line? Yeah, the same. The same. Actually, Thanks. less time. Probably less time. Less time. Okay. Thank you. You're all set? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have any questions. Anybody in the audience have any questions? Okay. Um, so I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Chase A. Moss, yes. George Shank, yes. Chad Sexton Marini, yes. Okay, so the public hearing is closed. Um, I just want to say that uh, I know that uh, Panda Walk has been around for, for a while and uh, it's very well revered. I mean, it's, it's nice to have that establishment here. Um, the, uh, um, uh, I know that it's always talked about, you know, where you're going and, and I appreciate that, that you're going to continue on in that location. I think it's really important for the town, but also, uh, you know, it's, it's just, an, it's a nice place to go. And the Harbor Village is a nice, nice area. You know, the, right. the whole complex is, is really nice. Yeah. Um, so having said that, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, application for a name change. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Teresa A. Morris, yes. Teresa Hank, yes. Jess Sexton Marini, yes. Yes. Okay, you want me to motion for a transfer of owner, manager, and entity name change. So moved. So that would be an amended for it. <laughs> Is that right? That's me. Um, so um, can you second, second. the motion to amend it? And all those in favor? Should say much, yes. Should say yes. Yes, yes. So you're all set. You're all set. Yeah. All set. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you both. Good luck. At the new venture. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Say hi to Ivy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, uh, three point one. Um, I'll entertain a motion to appoint John McFadden as per diem van driver to the Townsend Senior Center. With effective start date of 6 3 2024. So Second. Any discussion on that? Mm -hmm. Let's see. All all of, yeah, I got all the paperwork, so we're good to go. As far as that's concerned, 
Okay. So all those in favor? Two say yes. Okay, yes. Chat six in the ring yes. On 3.2, appoint Andrew Spinelli as heavy equipment operator to the highway department with effective start date of 5 6 2024. Second. 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 Any discussion? Jim is very excited about this to get, to get another person on here so he can get to doing what he needs to do. Um, all those in favor? Chief say yes. Chief Shank, yes. Chat six and the yes. Uh, 3.3, appoint Robert Garside as part-time building commissioner with effective start date of 5-6-2024. Eric, you want to address that before we do a motion? Yes. So, um, as I think folks recall, uh, since last summer, we were looking for a building commissioner. Um, we made the determination, uh, the board made the determination that they were going to uh, hire Mr. Garside as an outside vendor. Um, uh, on a kind of trial basis. Um, and um, we mutually made the determination that uh, it made more sense for him to come on board as an actual employee as opposed to a vendor. So this is really kind of a mechanical piece of switching him from a vendor. So his vendor contract has been terminated and now he would be just a regular employee. So this does this require the addition of benefits that he didn't have as a vendor? Yeah, he is waiving all benefits. He's yeah, he's um, according to the offer of employment, it's 23 hours per week, um, and he's waiving benefits. When you waive benefits, does that include waiver of unemployment insurance? I don't think that's waivable. Yeah, so <coughs> but he wouldn't have that as a vendor. Right? So that right, as a vendor, you'd have to provide it. I, I just, I just want to say, since he's been on, I think the building department's moved forward in a great way. Things are moving, permits are done, so that's really good. I'm always happy when you don't hear something, so you assume it's going fine. So yeah, it seems to be working out really well. So he, 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 he felt like this would make more sense. And mechanically, as a vendor, he just gets a check and he has to deal with the taxes himself and Social Security himself. If he becomes on as an employee, then we take out all the taxes and Social Security from his check and it, 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 it makes it doesn't change it. The, what we've had set up before, it's all the same. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's going to basically be status quo on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the ground stuff. It's just a, it needs to be an employee as opposed to a vendor. Okay, so I will entertain the motion. To appoint Robert Garside as part-time building commissioner with effective start date of 5-6-2024. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Chief say yes. Chief Shank, yes. Chief Sex and the Rainian, yes. Um, 3.4. Appoint, uh, I'll entertain a motion to appoint Everett Smith as summer water intern to the water department with effective start date of 5-13-2024. So moved. Second. Discussion. There's two. So he has two summer interns. Good. Because there isn't a need to help. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Chief say yes. Chief Shank, yes. Chief Sexton Arini, yes. Uh, 3.5. Point... Julia Holt as summer water intern to the water department with effective start date of 5-13-2024. So moved. Second. Discussion. Are these, these I would assume are out of the, the water enterprise account. Right? Yes, these are paid for out of water enterprise. All those in favor? Chief say yes. Chief Shank, yes. Chief Six and the Rainian, yes. Okay. Uh, 4.1, discuss, review, fiscal year 25 omnibus budget. So this, um, Mr. Chair, was put on in the event that we were going to make additional changes today to the budget that weren't contemplated yesterday. I don't think there's a need for us to make any other changes. Uh, just to be clear to the folks, the, um, the budget that is going before the town meeting tonight is um, a budget that level funds the school budget, the school, the two school budgets for Neshoba Tech and North Middlesex Regional School District 
the same amounts from last year. We're relying on the appropriation vote that was taken on March 19th to appropriate the remaining amount from an override ballot question to balance the, the school, the two school budgets. Um, uh, uh, that override vote, as uh, the board knows, but for folks who may be watching, is, is uh, scheduled for June 11th, um, Tuesday, June 11th. For the so, override. For the override. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the. So, so I just I want to be very clear on this. The the budget that is going in front of town vote today, tonight, um, has the school budget as a as a zero um, increase. Increase, um, but we are the town will be voting on that budget tonight. Um, and as far as um, what happens with that particular budget is that we are going for the override for that school budget um, if it increases. Uh, they are, um, are they, is this contingent upon the vote in June before they come back to us or can they come back to us previous to that? They, they could come back to us previous to that, but it wouldn't change the vote. The ballot questions have already been submitted to the, we have to submit those ballot questions 35 days before the date of the of the the vote and so those were submitted to the clerk yesterday today is 35 days before the, the vote so uh, if the school department came back with an amended budget amount between now and then it wouldn't be reflected in the override vote so any changes on a line by line basis would put the, the budget out of balance is what i'm trying to get at yeah it, so so right now the budget is in balance based on the overrides. Um, uh, if there were changes to the school department budget that increased those amounts, um, right now we don't have revenue to support, other than the overrides, revenue to support those, those requests. Um, so absent an override, we don't, have, we don't currently have revenue set aside to, to, to fund the, the two school budget requests. So the Board of Selectmen are only following protocol. It's not like we're trying to do another Prop 2 and a half override vote to the town because we want it, correct? No, this is the result of the, the, the first override failed. As the board knows, and I hope folks are aware, um, it was contemplated that if that failed, the school would go back and revisit their budget and come back with a, an alternate number. Um, the board had and it's wisdom set up another date in case that alternate number was not something that could be funded within the town's current levy and revenues. The number that came back was something that we made the determination was not, we were not able to fund it absent an override. And so we went forward with a, a, a vote to put another override on the, on the ballot, but that's what we'd have to do. Uh, the only other option would be to try and cut from our, from the town side, you know, 11, and a half million dollar budget, we'd have to cut $1.7 million from that town budget in order and, to make it balance. And if we, the town continues to have an override question and the override fails, the uh, schools will end up eventually having to work on one twelfth of last year's budget. Yeah, as a so the more, if, if it fails, the more longer it fails, the, more pressure the school has to decrease their budget. Well, I, as to the pressure part, that's kind of, <laughs> that's in their heads. But I would say that as of July one, if there's not a passed budget, then there would be, um, be on a one a, a one twelfth budget. And then as of December first, if there's not a passed budget, the budget is set by the commissioner of the, of Desi. Mm -hmm. So um, I I don't know what the record is of the commissioner coming in and and how those budgets are chosen, whether they rely on the one twelfth budget or whether they come in at, a, at, at higher numbers. Uh, that's and that's one twelfth of last year's One twelfth of the uh, no. last year. So so we are going into the meeting tonight with a balanced budget. Right. I mean, that's, that's what we need. And there will be an appropriation of last year's budget amount. So we would be able to fund the one twelfth budget right. based on them. So just, I think we should make it very clear that the school did come back with a revised budget. Correct. But the amount was 
a little over three hundred thousand dollars they reduced all three towns correct and that personally is just to me it's ludicrous i mean that's a little over a hundred thousand dollars per town yeah it's one hundred forty thousand dollars per town so not reduced why yes. why insult the intelligence of the townspeople so uh, and again i i i'm taking this um this approach to it i i don't think that it's it's not an us against them kind of no. thing we are a community the school is part of the whole um just like a recreation department is taking care of um you know the, the the children of the town the senior center is taking care of the the other end of the town you know um i, I just think we need to act as a community and figure out what we you know what we need to do um, there were several options that were available. Um, we have, um, uh, I hate to use this term, but there is a disaster plan. You know, if we need to, to fund it, we have um, several ideas. It's not going to be pretty. Um, I've also had conversations with the finance committee in regards to uh, if we go there, um, we're going to work very closely with the finance committee. Where I'm hoping the finance committee will work with us and we'll see what we can do to be able to provide the services for our community, but also, you know, if we have to, if we have to um, cut certain things, we're going to have to cut certain things, you know, and it's, we're not at that stage, you know, we're, we're coming into the town meeting with a, with a balanced budget as we stand right now. Um, and then we'll go from there. I think that's the most appropriate way to look at it. And my understanding is that both other towns are scheduling their override votes for similar times as to when our override vote is scheduled in, in yeah. GSB and, and Papua. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, I think everybody's operating on generally the same timeline as to when there'll be some finals in there, or when there'll be the next determination for the schools to know whether or not their, their budget is approved or not. And it's a lot of money we're talking about, and that's, that's the reason why we're at where we're at the place that we're at is, you know, it's not a couple of hundred thousand dollars. It's it's over a million dollars that we need to do it. And that's a drastic cut on either end, you know. So um, I just think we need to come together again as a community and see what we need to do to, to kind of right the, right the ship and, and continue to move forward. Um, I'm also going to give a plug to the fact that um, I had asked for some figures today. Uh, I should have asked for it earlier, but... Um, there are millions of dollars that we got last year in grants um, to fund a lot of different things. So we have been, over the past three years, uh, we have been um, very uh, aggressive in looking for uh, grants, looking for uh, a lot of uh, monies outside or even assistance outside rather than to, to fund them. Um, and I just feel that uh, you know, we're very lucky to be where we're at right now. Um, there are other communities that are faced with what we're being faced with, but in a much greater scale. Um, some towns are looking at $3 million worth of deficits that they're going to have to make up. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, I still am kind of staggered by the amount of money that we are. However, there are other people that are in a much worse situation than we are. Um, yeah, I, the, that. No, I was just saying, the other note is, the, the other kind of minor change, uh, the the amount that's being held in the budget for the building com commissioner um, has been reduced. And so there was like about a, a $12,000 reduction in the total budget for the building department mm -hmm. based on um, uh, finalizing the his move over to a, from a vendor to a, a three. Once that was became clear that that's what we were doing, we were able to reduce that amount. So that's also a minor change. Anything else on that? Um, no. Well, what Teresa was talking about, that's part of the omnibus budget, isn't it? Okay. No, that's part of the annual warrant. Okay, so we can go then, if we're all set on 4.1, we can jump to 4.2. Um, just to quickly dispose of the special, there haven't been any um, uh, uh, edits to the special since we discussed it yesterday. So we're still going. We, um, the only, and I think the only edit we made yesterday was in a, a correction to the so nice deficit line. So yeah. that will, the, the vote will will reflect the accurate amount of the snow and ice deficit after that last storm. Um, and then on the annual warrant, I think that the Teresa had something that she wanted to bring up about the annual. 
So um, I mean, originally, I just want to look at uh, potentially making a uh, motion to amend uh, Article 9, which currently we have at um, uh, borrowing uh, 472 700. Actually, just so that you know, the line, the line one and two, police and emergency, those are coming against the capital fund. Technically, it's a borrow, but that's where it's coming from. And the, the two dump trucks we see as getting a, um, those would be, uh, we would get a loan for those, possibly even a lease type of vehicle. But in the process of doing this, we had a request from the fire department to equip an emergency vehicle for $120,000. That's what they uh, presented to Capital Plan. Uh, capital planning came back that we could, uh, we could only approve seventy thousand uh, dollars. That went to the finance committee. The finance committee also agreed to that, so we voted to present to the board of selectmen to finance only seventy thousand dollars of that hundred and twenty thousand dollars that they had requested. So from that, the fire chief went to take the additional monies out of reserve funds the $35,000, but he's still looking for $70,000 for various cardiac equipment. He's going uh, to tell us a little bit more. It's not just a boat. It's not, it's not a $70,000 boat, but various equipment that he feels that this truck was needed. We, I guess during the vote, I don't remember that it, that way, but I guess you're saying that we, you decided that, the, you know, between the fire trucks and every, everything else, that we would have to look to fund this, uh, excuse me, equip this emergency vehicle at a later date. Uh, I didn't remember that way, so I wanted to bring it back to the board, maybe have the chief answer some questions about what that $70,000 for, what is that equipment, because it's not a boat per se, and see if we can get that back on the agenda. I remember that conversation and I remember us talking about that. And I remember um, that we had made comments that it was uh, because of what we had funded with the fire department before that we were, weren't going to vote on it. And I don't think we voted on that. I don't remember voting on the 70,000 in the, when we were talking about the capital plan. Um, did we go back and look at that, Eric? Did, did we? I didn't pull up the video. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a chance to do that. So I'm going under the assumption that because it fell off, that you, the board voted, you know, initially not to um, fund that portion, even though as the capital plan and the finance had presented that it would get to be funded. But now knowing more that we have more because I didn't have the details about exactly what that equipment was and it was being presented as what like, for the boat. And that's not it. It's much more that that equipment that truck needs, especially since it is cardiac related equipment, joys of life, those type of things mm -hmm. that we could reconsider that at this time. Okay. So are you saying that just because of the way it was presented, it may not have been clear as to exactly Correct. what it was? Yeah. And that's why I was hoping the chief could be able to be here to answer more of your questions. Uh, but it looks like he got called call. away. I think, he got, I think he got a call there. An actual, an actual call. But I do know that some of the equipment like includes, like I said, uh, cardiac pieces, uh, jaws of life. Uh, that is all in the 120,000. I know he's talking about taking 35 from uh, Ambulance. Well, there's 35 in the special. Right, and that's from his money. That's well, one part of what he wants. But total, that was is that what we're saying. Yeah, but yeah. That, well, I think I think that he was hoping to fund a portion of the. In, in the I think in the chief's mind, he had needed this hundred twenty thousand dollars to equip the, the the truck, the new truck, the new truck, and so he was going to try to get thirty five thousand dollars worth of ambulance receipts in this fiscal year to, to do part of the equipment and then request the remainder through. Yeah. And did the finance committee talk about that? Yes. Did yes. Target the special warrant for the capital? capital. Yeah. 
it was the March 7th meeting, I just have the minutes from that, that we did present to the finance, the capital right. committee, yeah, committee, and they did vote to approve the 70000 was a, Yeah, it was a fifth line on there, get, get the 70000 so. Just the 70 on Yeah, and I don't think there's any question that the FinCom approved what the Capital Planning Committee had brought I'm forward. I'm just they... checking everything. <laughs> I want to be yeah. very clear that I've checked all the boxes yeah. and not be accused of not Yeah, so I don't think there was any I don't think there's any question as to whether or not that step happened. But obviously, as the members of the board know, it's the board of selectmen that decides what ultimately gets put on the capital plan for the warrant. And so that that that's the final step. So at that time finance committee didn't have a problem with that being on the we did, we did not edit this purpose, and that was part of the borrow. Um, Who's the, yes, the borrow? Yeah, the borrow. So we had three items that we saw on the borrow, list, and that was twice. And we are we are actually in good shape on that as far as financially right. for that. So. Right, and on the uh, article, it shows all, all items are against borrow, but that's not how we presented it either. As you said, the first two items were against capital stabilization. And on the side to you directly, Jerry, this is a, a um, it is, we talked about the Jaws of Life. Correct. This is this is a different one. Because, different. Yes, it's not the one that, that you and I have. Correct. Correct. The one that's. Because that would have come in way too late. If Correct. Correct. I just didn't have time to send it to you. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so, procedurally, how do you want to do this? So, procedurally, there would be a motion to amend the capital plan. Article 8 to read from 472 700 to 542 700, which now includes item 5 as a borrow item for $70,000. So, I, and if the board chose to do that, I, I printed out the amended motion. An amended motion that we made on the floor. Which would make the total borrow up to 542,700. But again, those first two items are a little over 100,000 is coming out of, it's still, I, I still say it's borrow, but it's coming out of the capital uh, stabilization. We're not going for for to borrow additional one and two. Yeah. yeah. One and two. Yep. Yeah. So um I'll um I'll entertain a motion to um to accept this amendment. A second. Just a question. Can we raise the value of an appointment item like that? That was my understanding why we needed to do it before it became a motion on the floor. What's the value of the amendment? Seventy thousand. And what's the total amount of the capital plan? Four hundred. Four hundred. Actually, amendment five hundred forty-two thousand. And the item that's being added to the capital plan is an item that was already in the plan, or is it? Yeah. It was in the plan that was approved by the capital planning committee and approved by the. Right. Was it in the warrant article? Yeah, it wasn't in the warrant article at all. So. I'm less concerned about the dollar amount, so I, I, I appreciate the the comment that you can you can go down, but you can't go up. That is sort of the the rule of thumb. But it's not a strict rule. It's a question of scope. So, this is your rose at another town meeting over the weekend. And the question was, you know, fourteen thousand in the scope of a half a million dollar wine item is 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 the um, That's a lot different than one hundred fifty thousand in the context of a half a million dollar wine item, which is you know whatever twenty percent. Um, but it concerns me that the item wasn't even within the capital plan warrant article night writing an entirely different item because the question is from a notice perspective would the public would an individual that reviewed the warrant in advance received a copy at home reviewed it online have sufficient knowledge of what might be voted upon that if they had an interest they attempt to read it and they would have had no knowledge that this particular 
topic was within the potential capital plan or I can't say in the in the capital planning committee's report, but it's not in the warrant document. So that's that would be my concern from a school perspective. Yeah. Ultimately it's a question for the moderator. They to... would have had knowledge of it if they had been like attending the finance committee and the thing because they were in the capital plan. So if they saw it that way, it just right. And it so was just right at the last part. It was right. also brought up in the selectmen's meeting. Yes, we took the item out of it because we thought it was something different than what it was. So, so we took the item before the warrant was posted. Yeah. So it really becomes an issue from a notice perspective. It's uh, I get it. If you were that involved, you should have attended the selectmen's meetings. You should have attended the fifth not meetings. But from a from a, a scope. Uh, perspective, it's going to be the four corners of the warrant, and, and that's it. So, I don't have any issue with your voting it subject to the moderator ruling in an order because that's really a moderator call before it's mine. If he looks to me, I would express these concerns, but it's his judgment. So, would you amend your motion to subject this to the approval of the moderator? So, so I, do you want me to do it? Okay. I'd like to move that the town vote to borrow the sum of $9,400 for the purpose of funding fiscal year 22 capital plan as voted by the planning committee and, and the details that follow as what were you saying? If, if approved by the subject to the subject to the, subject to the approval of the town moderator. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Teresa A. Moss, yes. Josh Hank, yes. Chad Sexton, Rainey, yes. Okay, so I will bring this up with John before we get involved so that he can think about it and maybe ask Adam. And we'll let him know that we have the substitute, substitute motion. If you'd like to do it, but the town council says it's up to him as to whether or not he pleases it's within the scope or out of the scope. Okay. Well, no. Um, 4.2 special and annual warrant articles. We didn't really have any changes to any of those. No. Um, checked all the PowerPoint and all the numbers on that are the same yes. this year, so we're good to go on that. Okay. Um, so I'll move on to 5.1. Next meeting is going to be 521 24 at 6 p.m. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Can I just ask, so the 526 meeting, is that where they're going to uh, come up with a criterion for a town administrator? Is that on the agenda? Criterion? To do the search committee? Yes, search committee. I thought you said yes. we were going to come. Yes. Okay, 521. Thank you. 521, no 26. Well, we're, we're the only and again, I don't understand what you mean by criterion. We're establishing, we're meeting with the search committee. So we're meeting, we're meeting to establish the search. Correct. Establish. We're establishing and handing off everything to them. I thought you, yeah, that's a good question. Because I thought you said we were going to come up with giving them like sort of check boxes of no. what we were looking for. No, we, in, in, uh, in SharePoint, there, it, if you look in SharePoint, there is a search committee and it outlines exactly what the search committee does or is, is right. tasked to do. So if you want to make any changes to that, then we can do that in okay. the meeting. But that it's, yeah, okay. it's all it's all outlined in there. So we use the same criteria that we did last time when we hired Eric. Okay. But there is criteria that we have. Oh, yeah. That's what their okay. responsibility is. That was already established. Yep. Okay, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Great. We still have to have a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> I can't so make moved. it. I, was I would make it way quicker than most people. So I mean. <laughs> he can't make the motion. I said, she said so, so moved. moved. <laughs> so. All those in favor? Lisa A. Moss, yes. <laughs>